very good morning to all of you so let us uh, start the one day uh, half day program on this interaction session uh, organized by the american chemical society in association with the homi baba national institute and chemistry group brc so i would like to call upon uh, professor pd naik mm -hmm. dean hpni to give the welcome address Uh, first of all, uh, uh, let me thank uh, Asan for arranging this uh, program along with uh, uh, Dr. Professor A.K. Tiagi, uh, Director of Chemistry Group. Uh, this program is possible only because of their uh, inputs and uh, hard work and other things. Uh, on behalf of um, BRC, because I'm also ex BRC person, NHBN, I welcome you all for this uh, programs. In fact, uh, this type of programs are very much needed for our uh, research students. Uh, before going a uh, little bit on that, uh, let me welcome uh, Mr. Anand Singh, Associate Director, ECS Publications, Dr. Ajay Jha, Lead Strategic and Partnership, ECS Publications, Dr. Krishna Raghav, Chaturvedi, from ECS, uh, Professor P. Asan, I should not welcome you because he's only the host and other uh, things. Uh, Professor A.K. Tiagi, Director, Chemistry Group, BRC. My faculties uh, who are present here, as well as uh, online, and my dear students, want be up of BRC and OB Mabha National Institute. I welcome you all for this uh, half day programs organized by ACS in association with uh, BRC and HBN. Because uh, there is no need for our students or faculty who are joined online, but for the those uh, who are not well, well familiar with the HBN. HBNA was established in the year 2005 as a deemed to be university along with 10 considered institutes like IGK, BARC, RRCAT, VCC. They are R&D centers of BARC. Then we have granting institutes. Uh, let us go from the northeast. We have VC, uh, VCC, I already told, we have SINP, Science of Nuclear Physics. It was established uh, well before independence also. And many of you might be knowing and um, uh, such work and other things is well known and other things. Then uh, let us come to go to Bhunisar. We have two institutes. Institute of Physics, IOP, popularly known as. And we have NICER, where only we are taking students after 12th for integrated MSc. Then coming to UP Allahabad, now Prayagras, we have HRI. Now coming to the West, the middle of the West, we are in, uh, we have IP there. Now, coming to the Bombay, we have TMC with us, along with the Actrack is also part of TMC, BARC. And BARC also one unit uh, where our uh, Professor Tiagi is also head RMC also is there, which uh, deals with the medical type of research and other things. Now, going to the uh, Chennai, we have two more institutes. One is IMSC, Institute of Mathematical Science, and IGCAR. Maybe I might have left one or two, I don't know, in between. But we have now 
10 cultural institutes and one off campus center. It has become off campus center because it was joined the university, which is HBNA along with the 10 CI afterwards. So at that time, I said, no, it is not possible now to make it constructed. We have to make it a off campus center of HBNA. So NICER became off campus center. So we have now 11 10 CI and one OCC off campus center. Now coming to the uh, publication, uh, since its inception, HBNI has published uh, uh, more than uh, maybe uh, 2,000 publications every year. And last year it was uh, something around 2,900 publications by our faculty and students. Now, other major is the PhD awarded by HBNI. To start with, uh, we have less number because uh, Registration is less because PhD itself take five years. But now we are average, we are awarding more than 250 PhDs every year. And total now is something around, as on today it will around 2,080 or so PhDs we have awarded till now. Because the graph was previously it was two, five, because it was very less to start with and then now it is improving and every year we are awarding more than 250. As I told about the publications, apart from publications, our students and faculty are also involved in technology development. Uh, that is our strong point. Many of the technologies might have not coming into the society applications, but many of them are used by our mission programs of B and some of the technologies, which is PINO, also is given to society. And some of them are patented also, which is not nuclear related, because nuclear things are cannot be patented, that's the other part of the things. So if that is that, then we might have more patents, but uh, some of the things we cannot patent uh, because of uh, nuclear law and other things we cannot patent. So we have many patents by our students, faculty, which are non-nuclear type of things and having uh, society applications. Uh, coming to now today's uh, program, uh, I think uh, there is no need I have to tell because the experts are available. One is part of the research work is to do the best work, a good idea, try to conduct experiment to prove your idea is correct. And then the most important part is that how to communicate with the, your peers as well as general public. Sometimes you have to convince the general public also because if you want some funds and other things, you cannot go and telling you high five things. You have to come to the it with the lower level and able to convince to the funding agency also. Or sometimes the general public, why you are doing this research, you see. And what this uh, important, the communication becomes a very important part of the research. And you to publish in a good impact to generals and other things, the manuscript should be able to convey what you really mean. You see, you might have done a very good work, but uh, if the manuscript is not written properly, it will not convey. It may be in your mind that, yes, I have done like this and this for this and other things, but it is not put in black and white in proper way. It may, other side may not able to understand what you mean. And uh, it may possible sometimes, research work is maybe very high quality, but uh, because of manuscript, many of them, uh, your work may be not getting published where you think it might have easily published. So there are many ways the impact uh, how to write the manuscript, other things I think uh, experts are available here, but it should be a free logical flow. It should not look like a, you are, you see, sometimes people say that uh, writing a, a story or novel and other things, you see that flow continuous. If you, there is something you feel, then you feel that is something is missing, you see. Like the research paper, although it is like a scientific way, there is a own scientific language, scientific format, definitely we have to follow that. But uh, within that, the flow should not be look like uh, very discontinuous. It should be look like a continuous flow. 
Of course, you have to adhere with the ticker guidelines. I think I will not go further because uh, we have the experts here. Uh, with these few words, uh, I welcome once again to all functionaries of uh, ACS, uh, faculties present here as well as online, and my dear students. Thanks again for joining for today's event. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for giving an overview of the activities of HBNI, as well as some uh, tips for uh, effective communication or the need for effective communication for uh, research scholars. Now, I call upon Mr. Anand Singh, Associate Director, ACS Publications, to give your opening remarks. Uh, first of all, uh... Thanks for a nice introduction and calling us here for this session. Uh, we really appreciate this. And uh, uh, Professor Tiaki, uh, Professor Tayeg, it is it is uh, uh, it is a kind of privilege for us to have a session here today. And uh, uh, thanks for the total overall um, you know introduction of HPNI and BARC, how how things are placed as of now. And I'd like to uh, add upon on as to what. Um, what exactly ACS at a large level has been doing uh, for the research community. Uh, as you would be aware, ACS as a society uh, was formed almost, uh, you know, uh, almost a century and a half ago. And uh, since then, we have been continuously working for the chemist and by the chemist. And in fact, our board members are also chemists who decide on things. Uh, we have typically three divisions. One uh, is uh, the ACS publication, as you are aware of uh, the journals that we have here. Uh, the second division is uh, the chemical abstract service, where you've been using uh, the products of theirs. And third, uh, but last but not the least, the important one of all is uh, the membership division. So uh, in here today, we are represented in publication and membership uh, you know, part where we want to uh, you know, uh, help our researchers, new researchers to get out and do their publications and we need to help them as to what um, you know uh, they're trying to achieve and uh, similarly on the membership uh, front we do a lot of outreach activities uh, we reach out to uh, you know uh, students faculty members anywhere uh, and there is a requirement of uh, you know um, the um, you know support from our side we try to do that uh, but then going forward uh, i'll like to jump on the uh, small presentation that I've uh, made for to show you is to uh, quickly give you an idea as to how uh, BARC has been foraying in the in the you know publication uh, publication wise so that we can give you a there you go it's a quick small uh, you know some slides that we have made to uh, show you as to uh, how things have been for BARC and uh, HPNI. Yes, the data could be slightly, uh, you know, with some errors because it's so much of it that we had to correct and we had to trim it a bit. But you will see here uh, on the uh, publication on the uh, on the research subjects, chemical sciences, engineering uh, are the two topmost publications uh, divisions which are publishing in the. Uh, in the region, so there are almost uh, 3,000. This data is almost uh, 10 years uh, of uh, space that I've picked up. So you would see that chemical sciences picked up, uh, published almost 3,000, and uh, engineering says around 2,600, and so on. So it, it uh, percolates from there. So this is the uh, first uh, overall, you know, heat map, as you would call, on the uh, on the publication side, subject wise. Uh, but then, uh, sorry, uh, subject-wise, but then also uh, I've done a similar analysis on the titles that uh, you have been publishing in the recent past of uh, the almost 10 years. You would see the chemical sciences, the highest, obviously, is the Journal of Radioanalytical Chemistry, Alloys, and then third one is the Journal of Physical Chemistry, C, and Physical Review, and then uh, and so on. So this is, uh, this is the, so if anyone wants more details, I'll be more than happy to provide that, but just to give you a snapshot of how the journals are being picked up 
and made choice uh, by by the you know students and the faculty members and the researchers in BARC and this this whole space. Probably we can do a better uh, you know more long you know elaborate uh, research if anyone wants to do that. I'll be more than happy to do that. So uh, you would see this is the subject wise and title distribution. Same way we have. Uh, uh, published uh, distribution. It is important because we need to see as to how, uh, I mean, you spend a lot of, uh, you know, uh, funds on getting access and uh, the data is used and similarly also published in these uh, publications. So what is the current uh, scenario of uh, uh, the publication while you are at the top? Obviously, Elsevier's uh, I know, uh, pub publication is the highest because it has too many journals and there are too many things around it. Uh, Springer Nature is uh, second, and then ACS uh, and Royal you know, uh, uh, Society of Chemistry come on third and fourth rank. And this is purely on the number base. It is the publication on the number base. Uh, but then obviously you understand that uh, number is one part, but then also is the impact and uh, uh, things make a major um, difference. Before that, this is a just a quick heat map I found somewhere, which which I could create on the organization collaboration. So, what are the base, uh, what are the various collaborations uh, BARC has been doing with various institutes across? So, it's very interesting to see how uh, HPNI BARC has been collaborating, collaborate, you know, uh, collaborating with uh, within the within the organizations across the world. In fact, I mean, you would see obviously the you know H, you know Harish and the research assistants, so people who have been working directly with you, indirectly as well. You would see uh, University of Hyderabad and Bharatiya University. So there's a lot of collaboration that that generates out of this specific center. This is very inter interesting. I mean, we can do again a bigger analysis because it's going to, that would have made this. Uh, a slide more difficult to read. I had to correct, you know, I had to uh, dock it a bit. Uh, but then this gives a very uh, uh, interesting view of uh, how it's just not the uh, organization that you are working, but how it has an effect on overall uh, on Indian and, in fact, abroad organizations. So that is the uh, discussion part. Now, last but not the least. Uh, this is the uh, journal distribution with the citations and mean. So uh, this is more of a analysis on the publication wise. I've, I've sorted with the uh, publication numbers. So obviously the first one is higher, uh, second, third, and then from uh, from there on third onwards, the the number the citation mean uh, changes across uh, the uh, you know organizations. You would see here uh, that. Uh, I mean, ACS, obviously, as you're aware, has a higher citation mean, but then uh, the number of publication, again, is in the first journal of Elsevier, which is pretty heavy, and then so on. So this goes on increasing. The list is very long, but I just picked up the top snapshot of the data. Uh, let me just go to the next slide. Now, uh, uh, so last, but obviously, we want to see what if uh, what what effect uh, on what is the effect of publication of uh, ACS, uh, you know, uh, um, ACS journals that we've been doing. So uh, we see here that um, the ACS, BRC and ACS publication distribution, we have uh, Journal of Physical Chemistry, uh, C, B, and A in the same order, has been the most uh, popular uh, among the all. Uh, but then the highest of the, um, you know, uh, citations it comes from, uh, obviously, JAX. And then the uh, second one uh, of the higher is the ACES catalysis that you see in the lower front. Yes, the number of publications have been a bit low, but I'm sure uh, in, in the near future, as the organization is growing and the PG scholars are coming, as uh, Dr. Nayak has said, uh, we have a very long plan of uh, expanding this uh, uh, this research fraternity. This uh, this uh, numbers are going to go on the higher over the period of time. So that is the best uh, small analysis we could find on uh, the publications of uh, BARC and India. I mean, but yes, I mean, if anyone wants to, uh, you know, sit with me and we want to really have analysis, we can do a more deeper, in-depth uh, work uh, with these with these things. So having said that, uh, I think uh, uh, I'll uh, I'll uh, uh, stop here and uh, quickly, you know, not stand in between Ajay and uh, you guys because he's the. He's the person who will be taking the uh, important session uh, of manuscript writing. So uh, I'll call upon Ajay. Right. So thank you.
I think any criticism of share is should we take that tonight? Before we start, thank you, uh, Mr. Anand Singh, for giving an uh, uh, entire portfolio of uh, your journal's contributions uh, from BRC and SBNA in, in general. I will say thank you very much, and I am pretty sure you will work with us uh, for increasing your stakeholder in uh, from BRC or HBNA publication in your ACS portfolio. I look forward to that, and with that, now I will welcome uh, Dr. Ajay. Uh, to give a talk, um, opening remarks as well as a talk on effective manuscript writing. Thank you. So uh, once again, thank you, Professor Hassan, and again, uh, I say thanks to Professor Nayak and Professor Tyagi for giving us this opportunity. So again, uh, uh, Mr. Anand Singh gave a, uh, a a nice overview of how Bark and HBNI has been doing in ACS publications, not only in ACS publications but how into the publishing domain. And that's great to see that you have been publishing more than 3,000 articles in the different sectors of uh, research work. So what I am here basically uh, on behalf of American Chemical Society, we together here to give you a glimpse and taste of how American Chemical Society as a largest scientific society has been doing into the, the scientific arena uh, for the empowerment of the scientific community and also the people who want to be associated as members with us. So just to show you how uh, we have been doing all over the world, our presence, you can see here, we have more than 151,000 members and we have presence in 150 plus countries, 32 technical divisions, 185 local sections, 335 chemistry clubs, 25 international chapters, uh, 1200 student chapters, 93 international student chapters and 10 graduate student organizations. So this is how we are placed and again, if I quickly show you how in the last five years ACS has been doing in India and how the kind of transition has happened and the kind of engagement that ACS uh, has been doing with the scientific community in India, you can see the clear difference in 2016. We were publishing around 1500 articles uh, from all over the country, but now we are standing at around like uh, double the number, around 27, 21, uh, the latest data from 2021. If we talk about the editorial representation, we can see here in 2016, we were merely at 40 to 45 editorial representation from, from the scientific community. But now we have more than 150 people from the scientific community who are representing India and being a voice for the scientific community all over the world. So that's the kind of development, that's the kind of impact of engagement that we have brought together. And that's all uh, from your side and we are grateful for that. So if we talk uh, uh, widely about how ACS membership has been doing, so we have more than 10,000 ACS members in India, 80 student chapters across 12 states in the countries, and again, four or five student chapters are in process of getting established. And again, uh, you saw that uh, we have recently published 20, 20, 2,721 articles in 2021, and that was broadly uh, distributed over more than 55 ACS journals. Just to let you know, we have a portfolio of more than 70 journals and getting publication into more than 55 journals from the scientific community is a great achievement. And then that shows how engaged we are. So again, we have ACS India landing page. So feel free to visit it because you'll be able to uh, understand how widely we are engaging, not only in terms of event, but different kind of activities, the career resources that we are giving, the kind of science talks that we are doing. So a glimpse of which uh, my colleague, Dr. Krishna Raga will be sharing in the, uh, in the next session around the resources to advance in your career. So this is the long association that we have from the Indian scientific community. The first JAX paper was published by uh, Mr. Neil Ratandhar from Presidency College, Kolkata in 1913. Basically, so this is how uh, long uh, it has been like associated with the Indian scientific community. And if I talk about the partners in India, so we basically work on different kind of projects, different kind of uh, partnered events, and that's with the governmental agencies like Department of Science and Technology, SCRB, in no US Science and Technology Forum and Chemical Research Society of India. This is a glimpse of uh, the kind of advocacy, editors outreach workshop, which is a part of that we are here, and the virtual collections that we basically do to highlight the contribution of the scientific community. And if you see uh, the different kind of uh, virtual issues that we have been doing, uh, this is one of the, uh, the physical chem chemistry uh, focus virtual issue that came up in 2016, 2017. And it focused around the uh, physical chemistry research work that was uh, published from Indian scientific um, uh, community. 
and then this is a uh, focus on the material sciences ace is applied material sciences and you'll be able to find a lot more when you visit iacs publications web page which is focused basically uh, on capturing and empowering uh, the kind of scientific content that indian science is producing so uh, in the pandemic everything was shut down so what what we did basically to uh, Uh, carry on carry forward the engagement process uh, we did things virtually and you'll be uh, it's it's great to see that we were able to have more than 80 plus acs science talk which was typically focused on the scientific content not on different kind of things but focused on scientific content which was by the top experts the editors from ac journals and also the established experts from all over the world then dst acs workshop uh, which is a partnered event then a nine acs india webinars uh, institute author workshop virtual classroom so basically i'm trying to give you a, a glimpse of how we try to keep each other engaged uh, keep the wheel of networking going on during the pandemic also and and uh, that's where we were together so this is a glimpse of like uh, the partnered event that we have been doing uh, in partnership with department of science and technology and you can see uh, we try to cover all those uh, tier 2 institutes which are not easy to visit and uh, this is a glimpse of the places that we did this workshop and this has been again a great event uh, which captured more than 15000 people to be a part of this specific event which focuses on uh, effective manuscript writing ethics and plagiarism and again understanding about different career venues that acs provides so with this uh, these are the uh, venues where you could connect with us through so social media handles because this is a world of like social media engagement and of course all of you are on social media what i can assure of course within brc campus you are not allowed to <laughs> to do that but again outside it you are able to join so we hope you will be able to connect with us and uh, this is what i had basically uh, for you and i'll quickly move to the next session which is around uh, the effective manuscript writing hope that's fine So uh, typically, we all know that um, science is important and it's a fundamental part for the advancement of any of the civilization. And basically, when it comes to like how to carry forward that uh, advancement in civilization, documentation plays an important role. And again, Professor Naik was saying that communication is core. to all those kind of scientific things that we are doing and it's not only about we keep on doing science and we are not communicating it because at the end of the day someone should be there to follow it up and take it forward because again as we are sitting here we are in the light and again edison was a person who like invented light and at the same time if he would not have documented it we would not have been able to like see the light that we are sitting in and enjoying together so that's the whole thought process and the philosophy that communication is important along with the scientific uh, fundamental science that we are doing so the most important aspect that i am trying to bring in here is basically the understanding around why communication is important and why need to be expressive when we are doing science because at the end of the day if you want your science to go further the communication is important and if we are doing some communication it's important to have that kind of best practices so a disclaimer here we are not here prescribing you anything and it's not a kind of guarantee that in this workshop session we'll be able to provide you a prescription and after following that you will be a super smart person to like effective manuscript but again we are here to help you empower you and strengthen your own skill of writing so it's a kind of like uh, making you aware of the best practices because these are the things that we have been doing in discussion with the editors the experts at acs publication journals who have been like uh, following it for the last 20 25 years uh, on their experience basis so there is no perfect definition of a manuscript so if we talk about a perfect definition there is no perfect definition there is only one part which we talk about it's high quality or high quality attributes so there are certain attributes that we need to have in our manuscript so if we talk about that so you can see here 
So a manuscript need not to be a data dumping site. Of course, data is important. Data plays an important part. Data is the backbone of any of the research work, but it is not going to be a dumping site for your manuscript. So a manuscript need to focus on the scientific report or the scientific kind of philosophy that we are trying to bring in for the audience, scientific audience. Again, title and abstract plays an important role because at the end of the day, if uh, someone is looking at your article, the first thing which gives an impression is the title, which we'll be talking in the later slides. Experimental methods, as uh, we saw, that it's a backbone, and again, it leads to the advancement of the science. Because at the end of the day, when we are trying to report something at another part of the world, someone would be interested in following that work. So, if they are interested in following the work, the data should be reproducible, and that's why the different kind of uh, different kind of journals. For example, if I take JPC, which is very much popular in this community, so there are certain articles certain experiments from JPC you like to follow to carry out your experiment. And when it is reproducible, it gives you a good sense and it makes your life easy. So that's the whole thought process, why data is important and why data needs to be reproducible. And again, one of the most important and foremost thing that we need to take care of is the story, because story connects the dots. Story is the central part which connects all those things, whether it be the title, abstract, experimental detail, the kind of conclusion that we are trying to bring in. So story plays an important role and we'll see how story is important. Because story is everywhere in our lives and we know that how story uh, is exciting, everybody has their their own stories. And again, why story is important because it has a large and, and long lasting impression. So. Um, if I say, so how many of you have seen this, uh, uh, read this Panchatantra ki kahani hai? Just, just raise your hand. Yeah, one, two, oh, that's nice to see. And this, uh, so the, the character you can see in the Jungle Book, any one character, if you can speak loud, Mowgli, so see. So this is the kind of impression that we generally have. So the same kind of philosophy works. For example, if you are following some uh, people who are extremely uh, good at a particular research area, you try to like have that keyword in your mind. For example, if you talk about Yuri Gogotsi, so you have that keyword Amexane in your mind, right? So the kind of this connection is very important because at the end of the day, if you are making a story, the kind of work that you are putting in, that is going to be largely imprinted into the mind of the scientific audience. And that's why story is important. So again, uh, coming to the outline, how the outline needs to look like. Basically, the, there are three important questions that we need to have in our mind. Why we are doing the research? Because again, at the end of the day, the why addressing is going to be important in the scientific advancement. Because until unless we are not having that clarity in our mind, that how we are picking up the question, picking up the scientific problem, and then how we are solving that particular problem. And again, what the impact this solution is going to bring into the scientific community. So these are the three aspects we need to keep in our mind in the background, wherever we are doing research or wherever we are trying to draft that outline around a manuscript. So it's all about carefully organizing the data, considering how the, the different kind of data can be like transformed into figures. They can be, uh, they can be transformed into schemes. So those kind of things which we need to take care. And at the end of the day, when we are having all these pictures in our mind, things will get easier and clear for us. So again, uh, if we quickly show you what is the anatomy of a manuscript, so these are the most important ingredients which comprises a scientific article or which uh, we can say as a communication. So these comprise title, abstract, introduction, graphics, experimental section, results and uh, conclusion, references and acknowledgement. So again, uh, because of time constraint, we'll not be able to cover all these aspects. But the most, uh, the most critical thing that again uh, is important when we are writing or bringing an outline around the manuscript is title, abstract, the graphics which we'll try to like share with you and have like your questions and the interactions going on so let's start with the title so again uh, the first thing which brings an imp impression so whenever you are visiting a bookstore the title again makes everything exciting so when you read the title of a, a book you get intrigued about it oh what the title okay this is the title Chalo, isko padte hai. so th this is a kind of like philosophy which also works here so if your article is having the title which is having the keyword related to the scientific audience that you are trying to target then it is going to make sense so make sure that the title is having the keywords around the scientific content and it is impactful. There are many a times when people have this tendency to use the redundant kind of words like study, investigation, demonstration. 
and they try to ask questions in the title also so this is not advisable here and then extra use of words like exotic adjectives like convenient efficient elegant so keep it there when you are doing the analysis part or whenever you are doing the extensive kind of of conclusion or other things in your manuscript so this is how we would like to advise you around the title and we'll see how different examples could be more correlating and helpful for you so why is it important to have a good title so the important part is that you need to address to the scientific audience because at the end of the day if you are working in a specific area of research you would like the people who are working in that research area to follow your work or to comment on the, that work because that's the kind of community that we are inside and at the end of the day if you are having something uh, that is potentially able to be indexed into the different kind of database so when we do literature search we have a kind of tendency to put the keywords and then see what kind of research work has been done in the past and then see how we could define the problem so in that process also this data aid retrieval and indexing is important which is helpful when we have a good impactful title because sometimes what happens the accessibility of an article is also dependent upon the keyword that 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 the title is providing we'll see it later so if we try to have a brief kind of thought process around the title it needs to be simple it needs to be effective and it needs to be accurate so one example that will uh, like take the whole kind of gist of what the discussion has been uh, till now so you can see here a uh, example overly long title synthesis electrochemistry spectroscopic characterization and x-ray crystal structure of a novel knack knack complex that attacks dna and cures cancer so again while reading you have lost the track right so am i right or not because it's diluting the kind of impact that the work is getting highlighted here so the work that is being highlighted you can see here as a rephrased version in a shortened title lanthan and 3 dichitaminate complex cleave dna at nanomolar concentration so the basic thought process was around the synthesis of the complex and the kind of application which is in uh, in uh, which is at the dna nanomolar concentration which needs to be highlighted here but at the end of the day you can see the overly long title it emphasizes on synthesis electrochemistry spectro characterization so at the end of the day these are the common things which any of the complexes are going to have if you are trying to work on complex you are going to synthesize it you need to characterize it you need to have that kind of spectroscopic uh, details so why to like waste the words in the title and dilute it so it's better to have that short impactful and clear title whenever we are trying to frame our research uh, uh, research title so we'll take some more examples and again just to let you know these are some of the examples from acs editors choice so basically acs editors choice are the articles which are picked up by the editors editor in chief of different journals at acs and they are some of the examples of uh, how a manuscript could be like well presented in terms of like uh, impactful title sorry the kind of outline there is and the different kind of keywords that have been correlating with the science that they are producing here so when we talk about one of the examples we can see halogen bonding beyond crystals in material science so anybody who is interested in knowing about halogen bonding if they are putting up the keyword in any of the database whether it could be sci finder whether it could be scopus they will be able to come up with this this article so the accessibility is increasing and at the end of the day when accessibility is increasing people would be citing your work they will be following your work and that the process and due course of scientific advancement so this is the impact that title brings in and again you can see whenever you are opening a journal the first thing that comes up in an issue is the title and again the table of content so the title needs to be in correlation with table of content that we'll talk later so again coming up to the table of content so if i talk about table of content again we are in mumbai so and again if i not talk about the films it's it's a kind of sin so a table of content is like a poster of a movie so if we talk about a poster of a movie it shows you it 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 brings the kind of interest that who is going to be the actor the actress the villain what kind of backdrop this movie is going to bring who is going to be the singer and all those kind of things so the same kind of philosophy is also working in table of content so the table of content it gives a first impression of what is going to be a balance of the scientific and the artistic element in your research work so there are certain things that we need to take care whenever we are trying to frame or craft a table of content so it needs to resonate with the title because it has to be that correlation the other thing is that sometimes people have this tendency that let's pick up any of the figures any of the schemes from the article and put it as a table of content or graphical abstract some of the journals call it as graphical abstract but at acs it is table of content so this tendency we need to avoid we need to be so this is an opportunity for us to be more creative 
and that creativity again mixed and blended with the scientific content so if you are more interested in knowing uh, about the different kind of uh, tactics or the technicalities around uh, how to draw a good graphic this is one of the resources that we'll try to like share with you later on and then some of the people have a tendency that uh, POC, we need to make it more beautiful and it should be attractive. In that, they lose the sense around the scientific element. They try to put in the logos, the different kind of cartoon elements, but that's not advisable. As we can see here, so now this is one of the quick activities that I have brought for you. So there is two images, image A and image B. So I, I just quickly uh, ask you to uh, respond. So which of the two images you find as a suitable TOC for any of the manuscript? Just quickly. A. Uh, the response is from everybody A or anybody with B. Who is going to be with B? Nobody with B? You are with B. Okay. So again, you are with B. So let, let me clarify. So again, we talked about the fact that the title and TOC needs to be in correlation. And the second thing is that many people have this tendency of picking too many cartoon images, too many artistic things, which is not making sense with the scientific content. So if we are picking up A, we can quickly see that it is totally reflecting the kind of essence that is talking about the self assembly about uh, around the different uh, the docs scl that they have prepared and the application that they are trying to bring in around the tumor targeted therapy right so this is the scientific element that they are trying to focus on but if we talk about the second image we are clearly seeing that it is looking very beautiful well captured with a lot of cartoon images of course we can see some light in the different uh, segments like daylight, UV lamp, UV lamp off. But again, it's not going to reflect what kind of materials they have designed, what kind of studies they are trying to put in different kind of light environment. So that's missing here. So the scientific element is missing. Only the artistic element is highlighted here. So we need to have a balance between the artistic and the scientific element when we are trying to bring in the TOC. So this is one thing that uh, we would like to recommend you. So one a is a good example and again b is not so good example coming to the another aspect that uh, we'll take around the title so you can see here how beautifully uh, the title and toc correlation goes so water soluble super paramagnetic magnetite nanoparticles with biocompatible coating for enhanced magnetic resonance imaging right so we're talking about uh, some magnetite nanoparticle so now you can see on the toc so that magnetite uh, th this magnetite nanoparticle has been captured well with this section the characterization and the structural uh, the, the structural uh, representation now coming to the application part you can see the concentration dependent studies so this is the correlation that needs to be there the resonance between the title and uh, the toc needs to be there and that is only going to make a kind of impact on the the reader uh, the audience scientific audience that we are trying to target one more example for you, flash synthesis of cadmium selenide, cadmium sulfide, coercial quantum dot. Again, we can see here how beautifully this flash word has been captured with this, uh, this stopwatch and the time has also been assigned here. So this structural assignment is again important here and uh, the quality of the quantum dot is again shown here with this image. So the whole thought process is how we are going to correlate and resonate the title with the, uh, with the TOC. So again, one quick activity for you. So, which of these images you find as a suitable TOC? Quick answer, please. Anyone? A. So, uh, everybody with A or any anyone with other options? So, everybody with A, right? So, I think we are clear on that aspect and it's good to see that uh, the kind of discussion that we had is making a kind of clear differentiation here. So, of course, A is the uh, right TOC image, suitable TOC image we can say. Why? Because again, if we are talking about this protein which is going to uh, be selectively working around the extraction of rare earth elements, so it is uh, depicted here. But if you talk about the other images, so the one thing that was not advisable, not pick any of the images from the articles and that's what they are doing here. So not advisable. Again, having a lot of images combined together as a TOC, not recommended. And this is again coming from nowhere. They are talking about some modeling studies, but again, this modeling is not able to talk about what is a pocket of interaction, what kind of molecule they are talking about. So it's all not recommended. 
So I think we are cover, covering this TOC part here, which is in correlation with the title uh, impact that we talked about. Now coming back to the next most important aspect, which is around the abstract. So again, abstract is something like a trailer of a movie. So when you see a trailer, in a trailer, you get intrigued by the different kind of dialogues, the punchlines, uh, the kind of background score, and the same kind of thought process also works when we are talking about an abstract. Because in an abstract, we have to capture the most basic element and the most highlighting element of the research work. So we'll see how it is going to capture and how we are going to categorize those things to make it more easier. So let's talk about so it. It's definitely a summary of the research work. Many people have this kind of tendency to like use again the redundant kind of adjectives like superb, excellent, exceptional, outstanding, which is again not advisable. We'll see some of the examples and try to like have that categorization around how we can frame a good abstract. So before that, when we talk about the uh, functionalities for the abstract, when we are writing the abstract, we are trying to have a summary of the research work that we are trying to bring in. So that summary again is helping you to understand the scope of the article. The scope of the article is again defining the kind of journal which you are targeting. So it makes the life of easy makes the life easy of a researcher when they are talking about submitting the article to a de definite journal. So scope definition is again coming from the abstract outline presentation. And how we are going to do, we'll see the next slides. So why scope is again, why scope is important and why abstract is important because they are going to cover the most important keywords. And those keywords are going to align with the research problem that you are defining, the process that you have established to solve that problem, or the kind of analysis or the conclusion that you are trying to bring in from that research work. That's going to be important when we are trying to talk about the abstract. And again, those keywords are going to be the highlights when we are trying to search in different kind of search engines, whether it be a database or any any of the things that we are trying to put in as literature survey. So. In concise way or in a brief way, we can say that uh, an abstract needs to be concise, self-contained, informative. Sometimes people have this habit of putting up uh, conclusions in, into the abstract, but uh, that's not recommended. We'll see why, why it is not recommended. Then please do not cite references or put tables or figures into the abstract because the abstract is going to be the medium from where you are going to put the highlight into the broader scientific domain. And that's going to give the impression that, yes, this is something which is interesting about this article. So bring that element into the article rather than focusing too many, uh, adding too many things into that particular portion. So this is one example that we have tried to bring in. So this is one abstract from a published article. Now we'll see how we are trying to like categorize the different aspects, different segments in an abstract and how it is going to help us in broadening the different kind of things that we are talking in terms of scope. So once we are ready with the abstract, we'll be able to have that scope and that scope is going to help us in the submission process and avoid the desk rejection because many a times people do not know about the scope and they keep on trying the articles in different journals based on the impact factor. So impact factor shopping is something which will not come into picture when you are aware with the scope because the scope is again one of the important aspects when you are trying to align with the journal's strategy around covering the, the potential targeted audience. So when we see this abstract, we have tried to define in divide or define it into four different segments and that's around the background, methodology, major conclusion, and closing remarks. So let's say when we are trying to focus on a research work, definitely we need to have a problem and that problem must be having some background. So, and that background is coming from the literature survey, the kind of seminal research work that has been done in the past. So that background needs to be very briefly captured in this background section. Now coming to the methodology, so how we are going to address that problem that we have defined. The research problem that we have defined in the background needs to have a solution. And that solution is going to come into the methodology section, how we are going to address it. So that could be in, in terms of any of the physical experiments, computational study, asset development, organic synthesis, or, or mathematical equations. So anything that you are trying to devise in the methodology section, that has to be covered in this two or three liners. Then we are coming to the major conclusion. Because at the end of the day, we have devised a mechanism, we have a kind of methodology that is going to help us understand why this problem was taken into picture, taken into consideration, and how we are going to analyze it. So the major analysis portions are going to be captured here in the conclusion section. And at the end of the day, 
any work has to have some kind of impact right because at the end of the day whatever we are doing should be uh, should be showing or paving the way for some kind of another scientific development that's again important and we need to capture it in the closing remark so this is what we try to like frame around uh, an abstract have the different kind of uh, dissection and the segmentation in the fourth section and we'll try to emphasize this into some other uh, example also that you can see here so this is one more example that you can see and we have tried to like rephrase the kind of questions or the kind of segmentation that we were trying to bring in. So the same abstract, not the same abstract, but uh, the abstract from different article, but we are trying to have that segmentation in the same thought process. Here, we are trying to have that first section which is going to focus on the background. Why the background? Because the background is important to state the problem, define the research problem. Then the second thing, which is talking about the methodology and observation that we were trying to like focus on that how we are going to address or solve the problem. Then the third thing is we talked about the major conclusion. So that has to be captured here. And at the end, we have to like make the highlight clear that yes, my work that I have picked up, the solution that I have proposed is going to help the into bringing some kind of development in this particular area of research and how it is going to like open new challenges to work upon. So this is what we need to capture in the major conclusion. So now coming to uh, the one of the like glamorous thing which we can have in an article and uh, one of the good part with ACS publication is that we do not charge for any of the color graphics or color images. So many publishers have this uh, this uh, guidelines that if you are having more than one color images, they'll extra charge you. But for ACS publication, that's not the case. So you are free to beautify your article based on the kind of scientific element. So uh, let me be very clear that you can add the scientific component with a blend of artistic element, but not only the cartoon images, <laughs> the logo from your institute. So be very careful about it. So why graphics is important? Because it again gives us an opportunity to attract the readers. Because at the same time, uh, a paper with too many data, too many table is going to be uh, very boring. And if you want to have that kind of correlation, it's an easy way to like make people understand what you are trying to bring in. For example, there could be cases where you could have just a bar diagrams, but again, those bar diagrams can be also represented in a very uh, lucrative way. And we need to be very clear about what are the different kind of color, uh, color combinations that we are picking. So many people have this kind of tendency that they are keeping the light background and picking up the light color to draw that that curve so it will not be visible again the same kind of philosophy works for dark background and dark dark color for that uh, that curve image so please try to have that kind of mindfulness when we are trying to bring in this uh, graphs so this is how we'll try to like focus on one of the aspects that you can see one of the uh, one of the graphs has been like beautifully captured and what what are the major elements that they are trying to focus on so we can see here when we are talking about a graph so they are beautifully capturing the visible major minor ticks bold axis if there is something in the in inset it is also clear with different kind of color coded combinations and then if the font size the font size is consistent right so it should be so the, the whole thought process is, is that we need to have the graphics in such a way that it is legible it is making significant kind of work that you are trying to analyze from the data table right and it should be in correlation now, uh, again, one more example that uh, we have captured here for you. There are two images, image A and image B. So based on the kind of discussion that we have in the couple of slides, uh, again, one question for you. So out of the image A and image B, which do you find as a suitable graphic for a manuscript? Responses, please. Anyone with the B? All with A? All are going with A. You are with B. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you for like highlighting this part. So again, I, I understand why B. So of course, A is a clear kind of representation around uh, this enthalpy of mixture, the, the times, the time, the, the, the transition temperature, and again the enthalpy of free mixing. So you can see how beautifully they have captured with the different kind of color coded combination and the uh, the dotted line images. The same thing works for here. So they are talking about mass fraction with change of mixing. So this is pretty much clear. You can have a correlation with the data that they are trying to present, right? So that perfectly suits as a graphic for a manuscript. When we talk about B, again, sorry, uh, we are trying to address the same kind of things. So we were talking about the legibility. So it's not legible. 
of course they are talking so some, some people who have keen eye they would be understanding that this it's a time decay experiment right but again if we talk about what is the value what is the kind of indication that they are trying to bring it's not legible right there are too many indicators there are too many things on the energy scale that is again not visible right so they are trying to capture a lot of information but that's not clear and again it's not correlating with the data point that they have captured so again b is not a recommended or advised kind of graphic image to go ahead so again uh, why graphics are important because uh, many a times we have this habit of like we have to submit a paper just prepare a graphic put into the manuscript and go for submission but in hurry what we miss sometimes what happens that the uh, the graphics are not clubbed well they are not grouped or what happens whenever we are submitting an article to any journal it gets converted into the pdf format so when any of the graphics which are not clubbed well grouped well or the kind of dpi is not matching with the kind of uh, description or or the guidelines are there for the journal it looks like this so it it looks like a cross image so that thought again going to give a good impression to the reviewer or the editors desk so before submitting your article please convert it into a pdf format and see how your curved images are looking so that you are assured that whenever i am submitting the article it's going to give a good impression to the editor or the peer review community rather than this appearing as as a cross image so this is all we had uh, for this section again the most important aspect that again we thought to bring in here is around the cover letter so this is one of the most important aspect in terms of your communication with the editor or the editorial office and your entry to the journal so we talked about abstract we talked about title we talked about toc so all these things are going to come into picture only if we are knocking the door of the editors and they are allowing us to enter it because at the end of the day when we are entering when the article is entering it is going to peer review community then they will be able to see what is the title what is the toc before that we need to like not impress but again convince the editors so it's a point where you have to convince the editors that what you have done is significant to that particular journal to the particular scientific community that journal is targeting because every journal has a scientific audience that they want to cater for example if you are working in nano science you are not going to put it into an organic chemistry journal right so we need to be very focused around defining the scope which is again coming from the outline that we are trying to bring in from the abstract so be very clear when you are writing a cover letter we have one example that will highlight it better and correlate it better so we need to have very clear approach in in drafting a cover letter it should highlight your most important and significant finding rather than making a story of all those things that you have put in the abstract so in the abstract also whatever you find the highlight and significant part for for your research work you should pick in the cover letter or cover uh, cover uh, communication that you are doing do not copy abstract this is the first and the foremost rule that we should have in our mind that we should not copy abstract because abstract is going to be having or covering the whole element which is also having conclusion which is also having the way forward but that's not required the only two things that are required here is the impact or the highlight that the, that your research work is bringing and the kind of way forward that we are looking into the scientific community or how it is going to address the broader scientific audience that particular journal is targeting and we'll see the example it will help uh, us understand better so this is one of the example of cover art that we have taken uh, with permission from professor francis arnold who is a nobel laureate and again this is addressed to one of the editor in chief of acs central science one of the premier journals open access journal at acs so this is the kind of uh, uh, this is the kind of outline or layout you can say so you have to address the professor uh, Uh, dear professor whoever uh, the editor or uh, editor in chief that you are trying to bring in then the journal that you are trying to submit and then again as we talked about you have to briefly capture the highlight of the research work not going here and there just focus on the highlight of the research work and then in the last segment you have to tell or convince the editor that why your work is important for that particular journal or the people who are the readers for that or audience for that particular journal so many a times this simple thing we uh, we do not focus on and we we feel that whenever we are submitting our article it is getting desk rejected so there are simple things that if you, we are following we will not be able to like uh, uh, be messed up with our article rejection process so this is all we had in this uh, whole exercise around effective manuscript writing and now uh, the most uh, like what i can say uh, easiest thing 
for you to be a part of ACS is like if you want to submit your article or if you want to access the different kind of resources that ACS provides, there are uh, there are n number of uh, uh, resources which are easy to access, free to free to access resources. Uh, for effective manuscript writing, for proposal writing, and at the same time, different kind of events that we have, scientific literature. So those kind of things you can access by making an ACS ID, and this ACS ID is free to make. You just have to make your ID, choose your password, and then just create it. So once you have this ID, you will be able to have different kind of resources that uh, Dr. Krishna Raga will be talking in the next session. Uh, so th this will be covered by Krishna, and what I'll take quickly is uh, the session around this ethics and plagiarism. So, of course, uh, Professor Naik highlighted this part that uh, we have to do things, we have to communicate science, but in an ethical way, because at the end of the day, whatever we are doing, of course, BARC is a place where like this is of prime importance, because uh, anything which is out of the domain of ethics and plagiarism will not be tolerated. So, many a times we have this kind of habit uh, that what is good, what is bad. So, it's beyond good and bad. So it's all about like the best practices that we have, the kind of ethical guidelines we have. And it, the easiest way is that we can have uh, the different kind of publishing houses and they have the same kind of voice. So ethics and ethics and plagiarism is not going to change for any of the publishers. So whichever publisher you are interested, you can go and just type in and you can see the ethical guidelines from them. But from ACS, we have a dedicated placeholder where you can go, you can see what are the ethical guidelines as ACS. And what we have done, we have prepared one poster also, which talks about the 10 tips on ethical authorship. So I'll show you. And again, this is a, a free to download resource you can uh, you can just download it and put uh, on your table desk with the research table that you are doing and whenever you have some kind of confusion you can refer to it so when we talk about the 10 tips on ethical authorship it focuses on these elements and this these elements definitely capture all those kind of uh, correlations that we are trying to bring so the first thing that uh, we want to highlight is be accurate and truthful so accuracy and truthfulness is everything that we need in research. Because at the end of the day, whatever science we are doing in this part of the country or any science that is being done in the next part of the world, we are trying to have that kind of communication which is going to be the common, commonality in co communication and that's the reproducibility. So reproducibility is the common kind of communication that we have from this part of the world to the other part of the world. So, and this is how I talked about the, the example from JPC. If you are following any of the article of JPC and you are trying to like define a problem from, for that experiment, when it gets reproduced, you have a good feeling that yes, I am following something authentic, right? And the same kind of thing works. If you are doing some science, you have published in JPC or any other article in any other journal and that work is again followed by some other scientific personal in different part of the world, when they follow it, it gets reproduced, it gives a good kind of feeling that yes, we are into a community which is responsible. So ethics is all about responsibility and that responsibility we are trying to bring in together. Share your data with other authors. Why sharing data with other authors is important? Because many a times we try to miss some of the important ingredients or elements when we are trying to represent or present the data. And at the end of the day, different people have different lens or perspective around data. For example, if a physicist is doing an interfacial kind of study in a biophysical chemistry, a biologist would be able to like have a different kind of lens. So that gives a different perspective and a new area to work and do research on. Cite all sources. So many a times we have this habit that uh, the latest research that has been published in that area, we try to pick, pick it and thus just dump it in the references. So please do not indulge in these kind of things. Whenever you are doing literature survey, if you are finding some of the work which is seminal, which started the kind of research thought process around that concept, please try to cite that. Because at the end of the day, if you are starting something, if you have some concept and you are not cited by somebody, it is painful for you. So that kind of credit we have to give to each other because at the end of the day, we are from the same community. Report all safety concerns. Again, safety is a, uh, one of the prime concerns that we need to take care whenever we are doing research work or when we are trying to communicate our research work. Because many a times we deal with many carcinogenic elements, many of the instruments which are having high laser powers. So whenever we are handling it, we should have a protocol. That protocol needs to be communicated well with the audience with, in the journal. Because at the end of the day, if the people who are interested in your work, they are trying to follow it, they will be aware that this particular element or this 
this particular material is carcinogenic, we need to handle it with care. What are the safety precautions, safety processes that we need to take care of? So that's an important part of the element when we talk about uh, scientific communication. Avoid fragmentation. So why avoiding fragmentation? So many a times we have this kind of habit that whenever we are trying to define a research problem, we get carried away. And this, uh, this tendency of being carried away leads us to have different fragments of that same kind of concept that we are devising. And at the end of the day, what happens? That concept is diluted. So it's better to stick to the concept, have it in a consolidated way, and get it communicated or published at one place, and then carry forward that research work. So that's the best thing that, uh, that is advisable when we talk about avoiding fragmentation of a research work. Don't double dip submission. So many, many a time people uh, do, are not aware that doing double submissions. Double submission means if you are submitting one article to a particular publishing house and it has not been decided by the editorial office that what is the result on that article, whether it is rejected, whether it is into the review process, you are not aware of that. Meanwhile, what you are trying to do, are wo aata rahega, aisa karte hai, isko dusre journal mein dal dete hai. So that's not, that's not advisable. So until unless you have a decision from one publisher, one journal, please do not indulge in communicating that article to other journal. Why? Because this is an unethical practice. The second thing is that now most of the publishing houses have this common kind of submission platform. And that's again connected with AI. So when this AI database is populated, you are again tracked. And at the end of the day, you have to again bear the consequences and which are not uh, which are which are not uh, what i can say ethical in one sense and you can be barred from that submitting from that journals so i'm not trying to focus on other publishers but again from acs what happens if you indulge in these kind of practices you will be not allowed to submit your article for at least five years in that specific journal or any of the acs journals so please do not indulge in these kind of practice uh, activities or practices and follow the best uh, best guidelines so constructive criticism only. So when we talk about criticism, many a times people have this tendency that when we are following some work or when we are uh, trying to have a kind of research work and something is significant that we are coming up, we try to like bash the people who have done the previous work. So please do not indulge in these kind of activities. Try to have that in a constructive way because have this kind of uh, responsibility in your mind that the person who has started it from this work should be given due credit rather than getting bashed, right? Because until unless he or she would not have started this work, you would not have identified this challenge. So try to put it in a different way and be more and more open to that kind of uh, culture of uh, constructive criticism. Disclosure authorship and potential conflicts. So many a time people have this habit uh, that he's my friend or she's my friend, uh, she's not getting paper, so let's include her name into that uh, the article which she is not directly related she has not contributed or he has not contributed but still the person is my friend so let let the name be so please do not kind do not indulge in these kind of activities because at the end of the day an article has to have the authors who have who are the active contributors to it rather than the people who are for namesake right and if you are very much interested in acknowledging some people, many a times what happens, uh, some of the people who are from the technical department, who are extracting, uh, there is, uh, who are extracting the data for you, who are helping you with data analysis and all. So if you want to give them due credit, what you can do, you can put their name in the acknowledgement that this, this is the person who helped me a lot and we would like to thank them for the kind of insightful analysis on the data or that kind of thing. So that's a good practice we should follow rather than picking up their name and putting it into the other contributor section, right? Again, coming to the second last part and the most important part, do not plagiarize. So this is the utmost and fundamental thing when we are trying to do in a research work communication. So when you are communicating, even we should not indulge in self-plagiarism. Why? Because at the end of the day, when uh, an article is published, it's all into a copyright element. It's for your institute, between the publisher, and you are also a contributor and active member of that. But again, you are not allowed to quote that section from the introduction into some other uh, upcoming research work that you are doing. So please try to have this kind of uh, mentality that, no, this is the research work I have published. I have the full uh, responsibility to copy this section and put in the next set of research work that I am trying to communicate. So that tendency should be uh, avoided here. 
provide accurate visuals we talked about toc how impactful the uh, the tocs are how they are important correlating with the uh, the the title or the kind of first impression that uh, uh, accurate visual brings so these were the things that uh, we thought to bring in and again the people who are interested can download this uh, special poster which is uh, free of cost and you can put it or you can also uh, recommend your, your friends to have that uh, on your on the research desk so with this uh, again uh, i'll try to give some more examples uh, so that it is more visible to you that <clears throat> how people indulge into unethical practices and they get caught so basically this is one of the biological experiment that we have picked here on the western blot image and microscopic image so how many people from the bio background i can see here okay i think you will be able to correlate am i right so western blot image these are the common the bread and butter of uh, the protein chemist right Uh, the protein physicist. So uh, you can see uh, this one section that we can see here. Uh, this has been like copied here from here and again uh, pasted here into the the second set of experiment. But again, they have done it smartly. But the people who are into this habit of like peer reviewing system or the editors, they have a huge experience of like they are seeing these kind of things day by day. So they pick it very clearly. So these kind of things are not advisable. And please do not indulge in these kind of activities. again coming back to this uh, microscopic image so this specific section has been just zoomed out just zoomed out and put it as a second seg se segment of the data and that is again a kind of uh, image image magnification this is called image duplication by magnification they have magnified the data and just indulging into the bad practice or, or unethical practices so this is one of the things that has been captured by uh, professor elizabeth big so she uh, she is again active on pop peer so if you want to know more about the different kind of examples which comes into this unethical practices you could like uh, follow her uh, this pop peer page this is one more example that we have taken uh, for you and you can see and laugh also at the same time uh, because that the, the data is same the only thing that you can see here the kind of representation so here the, this is a dotted representation for the data points and now what they have done they have just changed it to the triangular or the star and the, uh, and just change the colors of that representative graph or curve so how they are uh, how they are caught they are caught by the kind of uh, tabular data representation that they have put into the different articles and again it's all about uh, the the smartness uh, of the editors and the peer review community that picks it well again this is uh, more laughable and ludicrous in one sense so you can see these are the two different kind of bar diagrams that that has been put differently in a different article but when this was submitted to a different journal what they did they tried to be very uh, over smart this is a over smart approach what you can see they have tried to combine these these three experiments together and then you can see here how they have tried to like put the three experiments together in one bar diagram so in one instance people like us who are not expert in that particular area will be amazed that this is something authentic but the people who are the into the peer review community they are the expert basically they are from the same community they have the kind of the insight and the editors of course have their uh, they their keen eye so this is something that we thought to highlight here and show that we should not be like of course publishing a paper publishing an article is an important thing that going to give you uh, a different kind of uh, what i can say uh, a feeling that yes my article is my work has been published or it's required for promotion or it's required for a phd thesis but at the end of the day on the on the verge of like this unethical practices please do not do this kind of things so many times with this question comes can i use the content of my article after it is published so of course there are uh, there are ways to use it and at acs basically we have uh, this uh, copyrights permission rights and permission which help you in doing so so when you raise the request for whichever things that you want to make if you want to reuse in a journal you can make a request if you want to reuse in a thesis you can make the request okay. and once uh, the request is approved you can use it so for ethical guidelines again uh, as uh, in the beginning i told you that uh, we have a placeholder which talks very extensively very briefly about uh, what are the best practices in in the sphere of publishing domain so you can follow this and then we have this resource acs author lab which has the seventh module which is free so again if you have acs id you can go to acs author lab 
put your ACS ID, and then go to seventh module, which talks about the you know, the different kind of ethics and plagiarism kind of things, and you'll be able to correlate it better with different kind of examples. One of the examples, as you can see, people in indulge in this image manipulation, image manipulation things. So everybody knows that when we are doing some kind of natural product synthesis or natural product extraction, there are certain elements which cannot be like removed. And there are certain solvents which are sticked and they, can, they, they don't go away. So rather than just clearing the solvent peak, it's important to emphasize that we followed this kind of protocol, but still the solvent peak is not going in the NMR. So be honest and again, bring up the things directly is going to help the other person who is going to follow your work. Because at the end of the day, you have removed the solvent peak. And the person who is, who is from the pharmacy background or in the pharmaceutical industry, they are trying to reproduce your work and they are getting the solvent peak every now and then. So they are trying to question their, their approach. Again, it's not about questioning the approach. It's all about the honesty that you have not put there. If you had highlighted the part that even though we try different kind of ways, the solvent is not going, it would be easy for them to focus on the other kind of aspects that why the solvent is not going. Right? So that's one of the important aspects that we need to like take care of uh, as a responsible research uh, researcher. So this is all what we had in this effective manuscript writing session, and we'll be happy to take questions. So thank you. Session on effective mindset writing. Uh, the session is uh, open for some discussion. Of course, we will have some more discussion session in the afternoon after uh, break. But you are free to ask a couple of questions. Yeah. One thing I want to ask regarding this regular uh, part that uh, particularly for self program. Uh, particularly in the methodology section, mm -hmm. uh, when we do a series of work with the uh, same experiment, same uh, computation or experimental method, that time every, or uh, uh, let's say 20, 30 cases, <laughs> yeah, yeah. same method we are using, then it is very difficult to use different language every time. So how it is uh, uh, permissible uh, in that particular yeah. section? So definitely, this is a good question and a common question that we as researchers uh, get many a times. So what happens that you're talking about the methodology section. Yes. So definitely the methodology section is not going to change. For example, if you're doing some crystallographic analysis, the tables are going to be there. The instrument is not going to change. Yes. The kind of process is not going to change. So many a times, uh, most of the journals, they allow it. Yes. They, it is not counted in that similarity index, if mm -hmm. I tell you frankly. But one of the things that if you want to avoid, what we'll suggest put that section into that supplementary uh, information or uh, so what, what I can say. Uh, supporting information. Matrix. Yeah, supporting information because many, many journals have supporting information. We have supplementary information. So that aspect you can take into mind because whenever your article is going to into the similarity index, mm. it will not take it yeah. because the supporting information is not checked for that similarity index because they understand mm. this is going to be a process which is going to be like practice one. And again, if you see that one methodology you are using time and again. So what is advisable, rather than writing the whole methodology, just put that name and cite the, the, the seminal one, the first one that you started with. So that would be one of the things yes. to avoid that. So no, referencing is not something where you have to take the right. Because that methodology that you have started or anybody has started is some of the, some of the things which has been uh, started for the first time. Then that right. Uh, so the right is for, for example, if you have to reproduce it into some other journal, you are writing a review. Right? In review, some of the image, images are to be captured, right? For that images, it's not only about your article, but some other article which has been published by the journal. So for that, you need to have that permission. And that copyright, you might have seen uh, that whenever a review is there, and the images are copied there, so in the, in the uh, subtext section, they say that this was reproduced by permission from this particular journal or publishing house. So, yeah, if you are putting up a review. Yeah. So you have to put the reference. No, no, for that you need not take the, take the permission. You can put the reference. Yeah, reference is valid. For others, you have to take the permission. Right. 
Another thing uh, I want to ask is this has been raised by many beginners, uh, manuscript writer. I just started manuscript writing. They used to ask that uh, that some many question maybe that is how many words should be should not be uh, at a stretch uh, similar to the previous one. Okay, so so. Uh, so basically, if you are trying to focus on the same kind of research work, uh, let's say, so what is your research uh, basically focused on? I am doing in computation. I, computation. Ask, I, I get this question from many beginners, actually. They sometimes ask. Actually, in uh, our institution also have similarity cross-check program. Sometimes they put restriction uh, eight words at a stretch. Yeah. With that limitation. Yeah. That if uh, that uh, line don't contain eight word is similar, then they will not consider it. It is a like, not like, I mean, similarity yeah. overruled. Like in SES journal, how many words they consider? So the, the, you are right. Like six to eight words is something which uh, again, if it comes into the similarity index, that that not totally not recommended. Yeah. So one of the major things that we would like to like focus here. Yeah. So writing an introduction part is a continuous. Say it's not a one day exercise, and that's why we try to advise people to do literature survey and then put the reference in. But many times what happens, people follow some journals, right? And some recent journals, whatever references are there, just copy it and they paste it. And the same thing happens from the introduction part also. They just keep one line from this particular journal, one line from that particular journal, and they try to merge it in the introduction. So basically to avoid it, what is important is to have a keen analysis of the literature survey that we are doing. And keep trying to like have that introduction part day by day. It's not a one day exercise. Once you have written it, just Try to have that analysis. Try to have that discussion with your uh, with your colleague. That how does it work? And it's not only about writing the introduction part. It also about the analysis part. Because at the end of the day, if you are a computational chemist, there could be certain th certain kind of simulation which some other people would be doing, right? And you might be like end up because the kind of philosophy, the concept works same. The simulation concept is going to work same, but the kind of presentation that you have to bring that will be only possible when you are referring to different kind of literature survey, because that insight has to come from you. Okay, right. I think uh, thank you, Ajay. We will yeah. cut short here because we have a separate session. Don't ask us anything for a discussion with the ACS team. So there is a slight change in schedule. We will break for tea at this stage and we'll re reassemble here exactly at eleven fifty. Sure. It online, so I will just. But before we proceed for tea at the ground stairs, may I request all of you to come forward for a group photograph here. So we will assemble here. Okay. And we we can tell them that we will actually in the next session. Na we will take. Yeah. Okay. So
Welcome back to the next session. So I will request uh, uh, Dr. Krishna Chaturvedi now to take it forward and talk about resources to advance scientific career. Eh? Krishna, please. Thanks. Thank you, sir, for this welcome. Uh, Yeah, this one. So I hope the tea was refreshing. Yes. Samosa khaya, kaju khaya. Energy ka hai? I got a nice lecture on the calorific value of samosas and kaju in the morning only. That is why I avoided that. It takes time. Okay, it takes time. That's something I am not from the biology, I'm not a biology expert, so I take your word on that. So I just want to know, how many of you have heard of ACS before this uh, event? Like everybody has heard of it. Oh, that's nice. Which is the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear about ACS? The first thing. Papers, journals, publications. Standard, that's something I'm blushing. Thank you. Best out of the lot. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, those are very nice compliments. But you know, what is the first journal that comes to your mind when you speak about ACS? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Jax. How old is Jax? 25 years? 50? 100? Uh, it's like 143 years old. The more, uh, the more I saw happened to see in Anand's presentation, you know, he said that the most journal popular out here is, you know, the JPC family, the CBA. Do you have any idea how old are those journals? 100? More than 100? Yeah, researchers, be specific. Don't generalize. 125? Yeah, they are 125 years old. We have another journal, you know, Industrial and Engineering Chemistry Research. How old that would, would that journal be? 100? 110? It's approximately 110 years old. So as ma'am said, it stands out of the lot. So of course, you know, most of you are prolific researchers out here. Most of you, you know, are the future of science. And some of you are the science in India. Very prolific research being done here at PRC. Uh, so of course, you know, ACS, it stands for editorial excellence as it has stood for like 143 years old. That has been our that. Then again, standard, somebody mentioned standard. How does that standard come from? We have a very trusted peer review network. Most of our, all of our editors and most of our peer reviewers, you know, they are, you know, active scientists. They are actively pursuing science. They're actively pursuing paper, uh, research. They are actively publishing papers. So that is why, you know, they are involved on the ground. They know what is important, what is right, what is, you know, they have a very keen eye. As Ajay pointed out, they have a very keen eye. So they know what can be the, lacunas or what can be the shortcomings that can happen research. So that is why we have a very, you know, trusted peer review network. Of course, we are present in more than 150 countries, so we have a broad global exposure. We are home to every type of research. You know, of course, a lot of you may associate ACS with chemistry, but we have, you know, journals that are for biology section. We have something, you know, for electrical engineering, chemical engineering, something for petroleum engineering. Of course, nuclear physics, you know, that's something also that we have a wide portfolio catering to that. Uh, it's also important because a lot of you, you know, are PhD students and they, you know, may have this opportunity to submit their papers. And uh, quite a few of them, you know, I was intimidated by the fact that I had to submit my first paper. Sometimes, you know, the user interface for paper uh, submission, you know, that becomes, you know, quite daunting. But we at ACES, we have a very user-friendly UI. Even if you are doing it for the first time, it becomes very easy to follow through the steps. Everything is marked very clearly. You can easily, you know, navigate through the process. You can submit your paper and be very convenient about it. Then again, we have a very rapid publication pipeline. Most of our papers, you know, they go out for review in like one to three months and, you know, we have something available for you. That is why we have, you know, the tagline, most trusted, most cited, most read. 
Of course, as I pointed out, we have a wide catalog of journals. We have something for the biology stream. We have something for you know chemical education. We can also you know go towards food science and technology, like uh, some of the work that may be done here. You know, it may be in the field of food fortification. So food science and technology, that may be something you know you can explore. We have something for biologists, you know, synthetic biology, chemical biology, that can be there. Uh, we have something for electrical engineering, something in the sensors field, something for radionuclides. ACS Nano, of course, you know, Anand pointed out, ACS Nano, ACS Catalysis, JAX, they are always there. So we have something for everybody. And the best part is that, you know, these journals, you know, they have, you know, a wider presence among the scientific community. They are widely recognized. And impact factor, which is also one of the metrics that a lot of people use to track the performance of a journal. In that also, ACS journals, you know, they are quite doing quite well. In fact, you know, 53 out of 59 ACS journals, they received an impact factor which was greater than the previous year. And 40 of those journals, you know, they received their highest ever impact factor. The citations, they also grew to like 4.6 million. That is 10% more than the previous year. And the best part is that the median impact factor that is for all the journals at ACS, you know, that saw a substantial increase of 13.4%. So we are not doing, we are doing quite good in that area. Then uh, let's talk about something. Uh, as, as Ajay pointed out, that uh, once you have your research done and everything, you need to send it out to your friend, you know, like, hey, buddy, you know, this is my research. Could you have a look on it? Could you let me know what are your thoughts on it? And some people may have this doubt that my colleague, you know, he may take some of that data, he may reproduce it, or he may use it. So in that case, you can rely on preprints. And uh, a number of scientific societies, you know, the Royal Society of Chemistry, the Chinese Chemical Society, the German Chemical Society, and American Chemical Society, they've come together to establish this platform of chem archives. And there you can, you know, upload your work, you will get a fully citable DOI. Of course, you know, they have some quality assurance, something to, you know, look that the language used is, you know, quite inclusive. So we have that. And of course, the best part is that you can use Chem Archive to submit to journals. So it becomes very easy, you know, if you have a paper on Chem Archive, it's very easy to, you know, submit it to a number of journals. And the best part is that you have very easy cross versioning between preprint and, you know, final versions. Because you may get a number of citations on your preprint and then you are thinking that, you know, I may lose those citations. But it's very easy. So you get easy cross versioning. And that's something that you can explore. Now, this is something very interesting. As I said, you are the future of science in this country. As scientists, I believe some of you or all of you may get this opportunity to peer review. Uh, when your colleague, you know, may put in your name that yeah, you are an expert of this field and your research may come to you. Their research may come to you and you are to have your comments on that. So that's essential. And uh, peer reviewing, it's a good practice in the scientific community because it allows you to give back to the community. and. We at ACS, we have a module, uh, the ACS Reviewer Lab, that one may use to you know, enhance their skills, their understanding, their competency, or their convenience with the reviewing process. So of course, I'll take you through it. It's a very small course. It's free of cost. It will just take one to two hours of your time. And this has been designed with the very best in scientific publishing. A lot of our senior editors, a lot of our senior publishers, you know, they sat together and they come up, came up with the module. So it's something which is very concise and easy to understand. Everything that you have, you know, the questions that you have related to peer reviewing, like what is peer reviewing? You may be confused that, you know, should I peer review or should I not peer review? Of course, how to peer review, what to write and what not to write. The comments like why to peer review, hey, this is a wastage of my time. Should I peer review or not? So you'll have answers to that also. And the best part is that we may be very competent scientists, but there is a need to write the exact, uh, there needs to be very, uh, there needs to be have having you know proper communication to write exactly what is right, but not in a hurtful tone or not something you know that uh, would you know uh, uh, be convenient for the reader uh, or the author. So that training you'll get through the ACES Reviewer Lab. Of course, you know it also provides you you know instructions how to avoid a number of biases that you may have in your mind, like there may be some ethnic or gender biases, something related to prestige bias, like see I'm from this country or I'm from that country, I'm from this institute or that institute. So all those things you need to avoid, because science is without borders, and you'll get a training to avoid all those things. And the best part is whenever you are in confusion, just communicate. That's the best part, and it's very easy to go about. We have like everything covered in eight modules. 
We have a very user friendly UI that makes it fun to learn. There are a number of you know checks and balances at every point of uh, the learning curve, and that allows you to access where uh, assess where you are. And if you are lacking in something, you need to go back to the module and you need to complete it. And the best part is that once you are done with everything, you get a certificate that allows you to you know showcase that yeah you are an expert uh, in peer reviewing. The second thing, uh, another thing that we have available at ACS is that we have a very extensive ACS webinars library. Uh, some of you may not be experts in your know, spectroscopy or nuclear magnetic resonance or something related to chem chemistry, some, asp uh, some critical aspect related to chemistry, something related to computational chemistry. So the best and the brightest minds in chemistry, they have taken this time about out from you know the busy, busy schedules and they have come up with these webinars. We have you know uh, topics which are we have webinars which are divided in topics like analytical chemistry, something on energy, something on materials. Uh, a lot of you like I, I like to eat a lot. So there are also a number of webinars on food culinary, <laughs> what you put in your food, how to go about it. There is also a training on diversity because you know diversity inclusivity they are very important to us at ACS and there are a number of uh, workshop, uh, webinars you know that are addressing the same facts also. We have a number of India focused ACS webinars like uh, Dr. Shekhar Mande he was he's the former DG of CSIR you know he took a uh, number of uh, he took a webinar on what are the key drivers for Atmanirbhar Bharat how we can make India self sufficient in doing science. Then we had a seminar from the former director of IIT Delhi. He delineated what is the impact of new education policy in very simple and lucid language for everybody to understand. And recently we also had a webinar by Professor Vikram Vishal from IIT Bombay who told us everything about, you know, what is carbon capture and sequestration and is carbon capture and sequestration essential for us to reach net zero as promised by the Prime Minister by 2070. We also have this module called ACS seminars in which we partner with institutes and try to come up with uh, a number of uh, uh, initiatives and number of talks which are relevant to those domains. Like those topics can be related to polymers, they can be related to nanocomposites. If something is happening at BRC, it may be something related to nuclear chemistry. So there are a number of opportunities and ACS partners with host institutes to come up with such type of initiative. There are speakers involved and it is something that can be explored. As Ajay pointed out, like we are working in a society, uh, in an environment that's very dangerous. You may be handling some carcinogens. You may be handling something which is uh, uh, relevant to, uh, which may you know be dangerous. Uh, and uh, a lab, it's not a safe environment. So it becomes very essential that you are inculcated with the very best practices of lab safety. What to do in a lab? How to do something in a lab? How to avoid you know all those activities you know that may cause a loss of limb lab equipments or something that may be very dangerous. So we have a module of ACS lab, uh, ACS Center for Lab Safety. And there are a number of you know guidelines out there that one may explore, uh, one may visit to understand that what are the best practices to follow in a lab. And we are happy to share that you know, CSIR institute, uh, institute students, you know, they are the largest cohort of students following these programs. We have something for learning and development as well. Uh, it's a module known as ACS uh, Institute. You can just visit by institute.acs.org. Uh, and the best part is that you know there are a number of course design. Uh, there are a number of courses designed to inculcate the very best into you. Like you get to learn a lot of new skills. You get to develop a lot of competencies. And then of course you'll excel in your career. So in that we have a number of modules designed around chemistry and practice that. Uh, you may want to learn about some new equipment or you may not want to learn about something that is coming up recently like molecular dynamics may be something lamps may be something so we have something for that also lab safety is an important concern so modules related to that are also there there are also uh, workshops related to scientific communication some modules related to enhancing you know how you communicate your ideas with the general public with this with the scientists so these are different things and we have modules dedicated to improving your communication there as well of course, there are uh, modules develop, uh, related to leadership development, like tomorrow you may become a dean, you may become a director, or there are modules dedicated to having an interview, taking a poster session, or a simple mo uh, module designed around how to take a meeting in which you are able to include everybody and have everybody's ideas on board. So we have a number of uh, webinars, a number of modules dedicated to that on ACS Institute, and one may visit that to get a better idea that how you can excel in your career. And this is something interesting and this is the entire reason I flew all the way to here. We have 
a number of membership opportunities available at ACS. Of course, they are segmented around three categories. We have a premium band, we have a standard band, and we have an introductory package also. The introductory package that's available at no cost, you just get a feel of how the ACS membership works, and uh, you also get complimentary copies of CNEN on your email. Uh, there's a standard package and there's a premium package. We are happy to know that there are, uh, I'll, I'm happy to inform you that there are country specific discounts for that. And if you're interested, do get in touch with me. Thank you so much. And I request you all to connect with ACS. Of course, if you have a paper publication coming up or if you are happy to share something with us, just use the hashtag ACS in India, tag us at, uh, at the rate of American Chem Society. And we'll be happy to uh, like that, retweet that and share in with you. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, please do let me know. Come on, the tea did not contain something. After drinking tea, you shouldn't sleep. Caffeine hota hai. The Vitti biology to mujhe bhi aati hai. Okay, thank you, Raga. I think now we will proceed with the next session. Uh, ask us anything to the ACS team. So I think whatever question is not only for this uh, topic, what uh, Ajay has discussed uh, in the morning, uh, I hope, I think there may be many queries. So we are open uh, to answer. Yeah, uh, thank you, Professor Hassan. And again, please feel free to ask questions or anything that you would like to discuss because we all, we all are here to like interact and engage on anything that you would be interested in. Yeah. Uh, I'm Satpati, so I have some uh, these things. Uh, uh, CACS is uh, now uh, coming up with a lot of open access channels like ACS Omega is one of them, and it is doing reasonably good in terms of equity factor. So uh, since uh, I mean our institute purchases uh, CS bound volume also. So if we can make it like uh, for our institute that is processing pre waiver. So for such journals. Uh, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Uh, as you would imagine, the, uh, the gold journals that we call it, uh, that is typically designed, uh, honestly, in a very, you know, between all of us, it is typically designed around planets of the European, you know, uh, setup that has changed. Uh, but you have to understand when, when we talk about open access, typically it has to start from the funding agency, right? I mean, perspective and a lot of things have to change to move from what we have existing to the open access. But it has happened in Europe. Yes, uh, it is happening. Some part is happening in America. Some part is also happening in, you know, developed countries like Japan. But India, as of now, we've not been able to, you know, figure out a plan or a, we don't see that movement as yet. However, uh, we have a very strong system that is in place. We are keeping our eyes open. We also look for options. In fact, uh, that's one of the reason I want to meet uh, Professor here as well. But we have to find a mid path, work it out, and we are working on it. Uh, something may happen, but I'm not very sure when because it's you know uh, uh, there's a lot of lot of technicalities get involved in this. But uh, over the period of time, possibly we will have something coming up to you. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Thank you, sir. And, and just to make it like easier for now, what we have done, if you see on the global prices, they are too way high, uh, specifically taking the country's interest. India, we have very low prices. And if you could see ACS Omega also. So uh, previously we were operating on USD $250. So that's comparatively lower to whatever high quality multidisciplinary journals are there in, in the open access domain. So we try to find, as Anand said, that we try to find out the middle ways. And at the same time, we have been like uh, trying to get some of the ways in which we could like provide some waivers in the past also throughout the country, not only for specific institutes. So that's one thing that we'll have to collectively look at and together look at along with the funding agencies, the institute, and again, as a publisher and the authors. So that's what we would like to say. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Please. you so much. My name is Varun and uh, I'm a PhD student here. So the question I had is uh, regarding this, uh, there has been a lot of, uh, you know, retractions lately, especially after this puppy year thing. So, uh, 
what it means is that uh, the review process at some point of time it just slipped through the cracks it got published somebody saw it on peer review up up here and then uh, the editor had to send some expression of concern or something like that mm -hmm. so and many a times even after this that uh, the articles have not retracted i'm not referring to acs as such i'm just mm -hmm. referring to the overall uh, scene yeah. that i've seen so what is exactly the uh, acs approach to uh, retract an article if it was falsified or some some stuff they did which was unethical mm -hmm. uh, at on what grounds and what is the matrix that uh, drive that yes now this needs to be taken back if it's the institute called if it's the researcher's call or is it the editor's call that's what i would like to understand yeah. so thank you varun for highlighting this important aspect and again uh, as this researcher community is uh, becoming bigger and bigger and with research we are going into entirely different domains so the content which is getting published at different publishing houses is getting more and more large so let me tell you so it's not only about acs publication as you highlighted it's all about the publishing community so the fact that you highlighted on puppier so recently what happened uh some of the things that uh, started with uh, i not take the country name basically but there is a kind of manufacturing unit called paper mills you might have heard about it so this is a doctored kind of thing people are getting into so that's why we are talking about ethics and plagiarism so we as responsible citizens would have to take the lead so there are some people who are not like getting themselves into that the zone of like best practices and they are trying to just getting bored by the the kind of lucrative things around promotion or they are trying to do things quickly get their name basically into the market as fast as they can so that's why this whole process around paper mills that are grooming or you can say this doctored kind of uh, manufacturing process around publishing these kind of manuscript is coming so now for acs things are in a different zone why i'll tell you because as most of us are telling that most of the acs editors are practicing scientists they understand where could be the basic thing where people can like manipulate or manufacture things and the reviewer community is also very much aware but again as you uh, as you said rightly and pointed it that some of the articles fell in the crack definitely because again we are human beings but for that also the the kind of thought process is that we are very strict on that aspect so i'll tell you one example if you could you could go and like browse back there was there was one particular one particular article at acs nano and that was from a big guy basically that expert in that specific field and once uh, one of the editors even though the article was published uh, they found that the editor found basically that there was there was some kind of analysis which was not uh, done in an ethical way and it was affecting the conclusion the main conclusion of that article so at that point of time the, the concern was raised and it was retracted so it's not about being lenient to these kind of activities but it also about being mindful as a researcher when we are working in this community so of course there are nowadays this ai tool is coming up with this whole thing again uh, professor elizabeth bick is doing the one part uh, spider is doing other part but as collectively as a publisher not only from rsc acs elzevier they all are collectively now doing this kind of activities where they could empower the authors they could educate the authors because it's also a part of the awareness program the more people are aware about it the more the funding agencies the scientific governmental agencies are trying to bring this strict guidelines that if any of the person who is indulging in these kind of activity they would be debarred for acs again i i clearly mentioned you that from 5 to 10 years will not be able to submit any article to that particular journal so these are some of the aspects that i would like to highlight and again uh, of course these are the things that will happen but uh, the thing is that we would have to have that kind of mechanism in and out and when we are talking about in the system is again coming to the publisher end and if you are talking about the out we are the responsible community who, who would have to think about it and again raising the alarm be always like prepare to if you have any question around any of the articles feel free to like raise that voice and we are totally open we yeah. i i'll not tell the number but again from a, from the community in scientific uh, basis that we have been seeing in india also they have been quite helpful in addressing many of the articles which were uh, not uh, coming into the best practices mode and we tackled them so that, that that's what i can assure you i'll not take up the direct names but again we have addressed those kind of things yeah thank you
I have one small uh, point to make. See, uh, now taking uh, figures or some part of article from ACS to publish in a book chapters or some review articles, uh, I find uh, some, for some of the ACS journal, it is very easy. Right? When we have our own paper or something pre-access kind of thing. But uh, some particular journal figures and all these things are chargeable to publish for a book. And I just want to know that is it a country specific or like the publisher specific or where we are publishing the book or what is the regulation that ACS does actually? I mean, the published figures, if I want to put it on a book, and that book is, let us say, not ACS, LCDR or something else. So what is the regulation there? Is it like country specific for India, you charge something or somebody who charge something? What is the regulation there ACS does? I think, uh, let me be very clear. So uh, if you could quote some example, uh, that will be helpful. So when did it happen? It's like automatically it is there, right? Mm. So, but what, what that, that's your article that you have published? Okay, so for the other article. Okay, it's free. But you have to, like, even though if it is open access, you'll have to take the permission, like, basically. You don't charge money. They ask for charges. Okay. So, so this has been a recent case for any of the things that you are doing. Okay, so uh, what I'll suggest basically, so if there is something that you could highlight basically and send it to us, I, I'll share the email ID so that we could like uh, consult with the people uh, like this ACS in focus. Yeah. Yeah, so that will be helpful because again, uh, we'll try to have that clear mechanism how it works, right? Yeah, uh, what I'd like to have two questions. Uh, one would be, do you have uh, some sort of recommended color schemes to follow for figures and stuff, like about color blindness and stuff? Could you, I, I was expecting that to yeah. be a part of the manuscript writing thing. Do you recommend certain colors palette that has to be followed, uh, something like so, that? But uh, second question, what I wanted to ask is, do you publish for different journals? Do you publish expected timelines, like from the date of submission to how long will it take to hear back? First from the editor and then after the whole peer review process, an approximate timeline, not necessarily, nothing is fixed. But some sort of a thumb rule of this many days it takes. Do you have certain page of that sort? Yeah, so uh, to answer the first question, of course, it's all about like as I uh, as we highlighted basically that you need to be very mindful about choosing the colors because the color blindness kind of thing. So there is no hard and fast rule. There are certain guidelines that you may see into the, the author guidelines that how you have to like draft your or cart uh, basically your graphic image. So it's not about like this is the color that you have to choose. But again, being mindful about if you are trying to have that color combination. Color combination is it's it's all about the color combination that you have to choose. It's not about like mandatory color combination that we are trying to put in, and that's that's that easy. That's that's not any specific thing that any of the journals are trying to bring in. So that's yeah, they take yeah, yeah, exactly. So no, no, not a default scheme, but again, this is a part of the mindfulness that you are bringing in. That for color, color bright people, it would not be something which is uh, which is advisable, right? And because uh, again, it's not about the targeted kind of thing that we are bringing into the guidelines. That this is the primary color that you have to change. But again, being mindful as an author, as a responsible uh, science, science scientist. And on the second question that you mentioned, of course, uh, for different journals, again, you might be knowing that different journals have different kind of format. Let's say if I talk about organic letters, it totally focuses on communication, right? So the time of processing again changes because uh, they are very much fast. Why? Because they talk only about the novel kind of things and it's a like, four page manuscript. Or even I talk about the other publishers, RSC, chem, chem communication, chemical communication. That's one of the aspects. So it depends upon the different kind of journals that we are talking about. If it is going for a review, like if review articles are there, 
that if you are trying to at any point of time if you are like invited to write a review for accounts of chemical research or accounts of material research that will have a different kind of timeline but for general kind of article it like uh, uh, four weeks four to eight weeks you can see the, the results the decision coming in but for communication it's less than two weeks it's less than two weeks that i can assure you and you might have seen if you submit anything to organic letter that experience would be like a first hand for you uh, for articles in goc that will be slightly lengthened for reviews if you are doing some other thing that it will again take some time because it's our review extensive kind of thing that uh, takes rigor into aspect so that's how it depends upon the format hope that answers the question right uh, excuse me <laughs> I want to ask uh, regarding reference style. Every uh, different journal have different reference style. Yeah. So when you submit, uh, sometimes it becomes very difficult to every time change the reference style. Uh, as if we don't know it will be accepted or not. Yeah. So is it possible that when we are uh, submitting before getting the decision, we can use a common format for reference style? Of course, it's a it's a publisher wide kind of uh, issue that is upcoming, and this is all about the author experience <laughs> that everybody is trying to focus on. And again, these kind of changes will take some time. But this is one of the questions that most of the publisher are trying to focus uh, around the referencing style, because again, if the referencing style is common, it will be easy for uh, all the authors to like publish their research work, submit the research work, whichever journal they are trying to focus on. So yeah, we definitely take that part. <laughs> uh, one more question. Yeah, please. Uh, so you share uh, the uh, initial screening process. Actually, for uh, ACS, um, many people have that negative feeling that there is a massive rejection from uh, editorial I mean, screening process itself. Uh -huh. So in some cases, we have also seen even that work is very good and uh, significantly good. Means to be published in that journal, we got reply. This. Uh, is not uh, significant or uh, giving new insight, even though it has many insight. It is totally a, uh, means uh, that indicates that without um, seeing or with the content of the paper, that reply came. And sometimes we got that there is no uh, correlation with experiment and theoretical like uh, things, even though there is a significant correlation with reference that uh, sometimes we got reply. And even we uh, give for rebuttal also, that time uh, we see that judgment uh, uh, is not there. So can you... So comment? let me just first start with a question. So this was experience with ACS journal, any of the ACS journals? Yeah. Yes. Yes. ACS journal you're yes, talking about, yes. right? Yes. So uh, again, uh, many a times we have this kind of feeling that whenever we are submitting an article or we have done our research work, uh, we think that this is the best that uh, we could produce or we could like address as a research problem. But what happens that uh, again, sometimes we are not mindful or sometimes we miss some of the important or the minor kind of aspect as we were talking about. So when we are trying to focus on the abstract, so it, it all gives us an insight around the scope of the journal. So sometimes what happens that may, uh, you may have missed any of the critical element which the scope is trying to refer from that special journal. So let me give you one example. So many people have this complaint around, now ACS Sustainable Chemistry is not publishing, uh, not accepting our research work. So what has happened? But again, when we try to like gauge into what was the important or the, uh, or the initial insight from the author's point of view, so they were not able to read the scope of that particular journal because that scope has recently evolved in one or two years. And they were trying to have that mindset that five years back, AC Sustainable Chemistry was accepting this research work. Now it is not accepting why this is happening. So one of the important things that we would like to highlight is try to be updated with the scope of any of the journals. It could be like from any of the publishers. So getting it's, it's, it's because the point is that the editor of any journal, ACS, they try to focus and try to be very much into that domain of addressing what the particular audience that they are catering to is interested in. It's not about getting everything in a broader sense. Because at the end of the day, if we are making everything broader, it is diluting the kind of quality that we are trying to bring. So the first advice is try to be updated with the scope. The second thing is again, the cover letter part that we try to highlight. Many times we miss and we try to bring in all those elements that we have taken care of. Because we are in a hurry. We have done so much. Why should we write uh, this much, right? Why should only we restrict ourselves to just the highlight part? We will like 
we'll try to put everything we'll pour everything that we have done so please try to restrict yourself so these are a couple of things uh, that we would like to uh, mention here and see desk rejection does not mean that the editor has not seen your paper right so sometimes what happens that there are certain editorial office members they also have that insight along with the editors the handling editors so they are themselves this expert they also understand whether this kind of article is going to go into the peer review community or not so why to waste the time of the peer reviews if i am going to able if i am ably understanding the kind of work that you are putting i could make a decision so if they are trying to make a decision it's it's something that you can go ahead with the rebuttal and if rebuttal is like sensible they accept it so these are the things also that happen but again every now and then if you are putting a rebuttal that also gives a wrong message that you are trying to be resist resisting to whatever decision because at the end of the day the editor's decision is final you also know that because one has to take the charge right so that's how things work yeah please so i would like to ask about uh, the main important thing the impact factor so would you like to comment uh, like why some of the most oldest like journals like jpc and all this why their impact factors are gradually decreasing over the years that mm. to like very significantly and we are seeing that uh, some of the very new journals from other publishers they are like gaining impact factors like very very sharply why mm. can you please describe yeah so uh, especially i would like to like bring in your thoughts also in this whole kind of so it's not a, about the impact factor of acs journal journals but again talking about the impact factor so if why we are focusing on impact factor it's a kind of of course we are focusing because it's a kind of one of the quantitative elements one of the quantitative metrics to know about a journal right so we are not going to talk specifically about the quality of a journal it's a quantitative aspect when we talk about the quantity the quantity has to have some kind of numbers right so when we talk about the physics community right when we talk about the biology community when we talk about some some other community so that community has a specific reach it doesn't have the whole kind of broader reach am i right so if i say exactly for the physics people the community is not as big as the materials in the chemistry right so the community which is going to access it read the article they are only going to cite it and impact factor is from where coming is it? it is coming directly from the citations so the community which is citing which is publishing they are only going to contribute to it so here comes the effect of the mass the mass is going to be a contributor to that impact factor so if we say why the material journals or the energy journals are flourishing well because so many funding agencies are now like promoting or empowering the material scientists and people who are from the young generation you might have seen that their interest is totally aligned towards that so that community is getting bigger the people who are actively working in that area it's getting bigger the articles that are getting published it's also in the larger number the citations which is coming it's also in the larger number so in that aspect if we say so the community is also essential an impact factor for uh impact factor again it's it's a matrix it's a quantitative aspect so we cannot like compare it with the quality of the element because at the end of the day the quality comes from the kind of editorial process the peer review community or the editorial expertise that a journal has so for example if you choose a journal so may i ask what is the critical thing that you talk when you are choosing a journal for submission for me it's the scope first yeah. and then uh, first i i always go for acs yeah so it's it's why acs because you know that l- let me just add on your behalf why acs because you know that the people who are into that editorial committee they are the active scientists they are the experts who are well renowned in their area of sphere research right and the other thing is that you have faith on the editorial process you understand that it's not going to be fast right false it's not going to be false so that's one of the quality element that makes you bound to acs or that faithfulness is coming to us it's not about the impact factor only right so that that's how it's it's only a kind of metric so that's why the whole game is coming around this alt metric and all not only impact factor but also having a wholesome approach where we could understand what is the impact basically this research article is bringing right that makes sense thank you yeah i agree so uh, my simple concern is 
as the number of open ss journals are increasing it's becoming more and more difficult to publish without paying means subscription journals and they are for us degrading and in institutes where we don't have funding for publication then it's again very difficult thing yeah so i and, think the and same and uh, 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 because of this open ss things uh, the journals previously which used to have very good papers now their quality is also decreasing uh i would agree and disagree both because uh, open access typically uh, is is current it is around europe mostly uh, the publications are happening there because obviously open access is the future we understand that and we as as uh, we could sit down and really give you a process of what we have done in the past but and the journals are coming but there's still a long way to go especially for india so i mean the big journals are still where they are uh they also have they're now called hybrid i mean in acs at least you can you know you can take both but the the golden goal access journals are coming in but still they are kind of pushed right so there's still a, some good time before the whole thing starts moving there yes europe is pushing it so we'll have more better picture in some time but as of now I'm, i won't be too worried but in in the uh, current future or you know we uh, in the, the let's say 5 uh, years or 10 years from now things may change and then that's also good in a certain way because all those journals all the articles will be available for you to read and till that time we'll find a mid path to work because obviously yeah, things are changing here yeah. getting but when we have to we have to pay for that we don't have funding if you have a challenge call me <laughs> right we'll try to figure out answer that okay thank you so much thank you sir i have a question yeah please uh, go ahead as a begin as a beginner uh, will, will you uh, ensure or optimize that this work we go to a high impact factor journal or a low impact factor journal because all the discoveries are important to the scientific uh, community so how will you uh, optimize so, that part so the, the, the same point that uh, uh, so may I know may I know your name please yeah. dr sangeeta so dr sangeeta raised the valid point around that scope thing so if you are not uh, if you are not going to fall a victim to the impact factor because that's not the only kind of metrics so it's better to go with the scope of the journal the kind of editorial process that the journal follows and the kind of editorial representation because uh, let us be very frank about some of the new journals which are emerging so new journals are open access journals of course there are some hybrid journals existing one which are coming into the new territory so if you want to know that what this basic journal is going to catered to the audience whether it is aligning with the scope of my article or not whatever size i am doing the scope is going to be covered up in it or not and if it is covered then who are the people who are going to like make a decision on it are there relevant people are the experts on it if they are expert experts then they will give me qualitative feedback qualitative comment will come that will enhance the quality of my research work so that should be the thought process because at the end of the day this impact factor is one of the aspect that's not going to be the only thing to be judged upon right so focus on the scope focus on the editorial process and the editorial representation of a journal so that that's the only thing that we would recommend thank you thank you yeah please since uh, i mean uh, it, all journal offices they have different uh, feel about styling of manuscript like acs uses something lcbr uses something so like can you make a india specific portal because we are not native english speaking people correct now so to styling your like i put my word file to your that india specific portal and i put my word file there and see the styling language and things like that and get some uh, feel about it that whether it fits uh, with the styling english standards and all these things because some of the things i mean that then maybe we can have a scope of improvement and then uh, finally put it on uh, the journal for as a form all these things so like one portal which is specific to india we put a journal and see check the styling and these things and get a feel about it okay the question so uh, yeah i mean uh, that's kind of difficult because it will be like you know all the articles going to come uh but alternatively uh, uh we do have one uh, acs guy for scholarly communication which is called acs style guide which uh, which used to be a book in the past 
and it was a kind of PDF. And now recently it has it has become an online subscription for for a year or something. It comes back. But it has all the you know things that you would need to use for, especially for new students who want to just refer back. Let's say I have a table. What do I do with this? Where do I put it? How can I plan it well? I mean, I'm, Ajay may not be available for him, no, every time, just for our session. But then, let's say he wants to go back uh, online and search for a chapter, or let's say he wants to file for a patent. So, I mean, patent filing obviously is a long process. He will have to find, you know, find some lawyer or something later on. But initially, when he or she is working, how do they really plan the data? How do they plan the whole thing? That kind of information is available in the style guide or ACES guide for scholarly commission. Possibly that would be a not a direct answer to your question, but if that is there, that, that question automatically will start minimizing. Is my approach uh, to the to the problem? Yeah. And again, uh, we understand uh, from uh, the perspective of like not native uh, authors, like not native English authors. So it's it's one of the challenges that we are also trying to address. And again, as you are talking about a portal, uh, that would if. Like most of the publishers are trying to have that, as you highlighted, that there are certain services, editorial services that they provide uh, to improve the kind of language that we are taking. So again, uh, some of the, the in some of the countries that's chargeable and that's easy to like take up. For India, it's again a challenging thing. Uh, but in future, we may think about it. That's a welcome kind of thought that you have put in. That if there is some kind of portal that will ease the process, because for non-native English authors, that's one of the things that we should like focus on. And you must be having this feeling that why we are here. We do quality science, but again, when it comes to presentation, we admit that there are some aspects where we are lacking. So this whole uh, sort of uh, education, sort of awareness, sort of program is mean to like have. Those kind of understanding, building in ourselves, having that confidence that no, we can also do it. And there are certain ways, there are certain minimum kind of thing that after bringing, we can make up all those kind of like changes, all those kind of environment from our side. So that's the whole, whole thought process. Software for using? Yeah, like free software or like or anything commercial? So commercial, it's for TOC, it's all about like uh, the kind of work that you are doing. Let's say if you are doing a microscopic studies and all. So uh, for these kind of collections, what like, uh, people use to image software, that's one of the software that I have used. Uh, for uh, this UV fluorescence, this origin software, someone was talking about this. Origin, you were talking, right? Origin. So. What is it is a software. So these are the so these the kind of the point that I'm trying to bring in. We need not think about the uh, the costly softwares, but focus on what are the ingredients and what is the refinement around the legibility or the combination of the colors that we are trying to bring in. Okay, for three D, you you can take help from other people who are nowadays there is one professional uh, I can say the student yeah I see Trivendram. He is a BSMS student. He is fairly active on Twitter. So he does a lot of quality graphics for a number of cover cover arts. But then again, it's more on the thought process. You can also go ahead with MS PowerPoint. That's the best thing. It's cheap, easily available, and it also has some three D modules that you can work with. So it's all about the satisfaction that you want to bring in. So for us. Uh, when we were preparing for a cover page, and again, Krishna had also one of the cover pages in some of the journals, right? So we did use just PowerPoint, uh, and the kind of like representations, some of the uh, some of the fine scientific kind of uh, so those, yeah. So how you can make it easy? It's all about. So with a circle, also you can make things clear, but again, you have to like make sure that how the circle is appearing, right? Right. It's simple, easy to follow, and then again, whatever. It should align with your title. Again, uh, talking about you know capturing volatile chemicals in your title, and below you are showing something which is burning or something which is dangerous, and it is making no sense. Then again, of course, if you're on a PowerPoint, you could put a net around it, capture that. That would make sense. And for that, you know, uh, PowerPoint is the best thing. Otherwise, you can get in touch with a number of freelancers there out there. They are doing good work. Yeah, and just to make sure, the publishers never say that you should go for this uh, 
high cost <laughs> software so they have no recommendation around it they also understand that uh, these are the restrictions that is in the author community and at the end of the day we are scientists scientists have a limited kind of creative element but when the creativity is there that's also a rare combination right any further questions Yes, I think if uh, there are no more questions, uh, let us come to the end of this uh, session. Uh, and, uh, I would like to express, I mean, as a formality, a sincere appreciation and thanks to all the people. First of all, uh, let me convey to you that the entire exercise of this uh, half-day uh, interaction meeting is the brainchild of uh, Professor P.D. Naik, Dean HBNI, and uh, Dr. Professor A.K. Tyagi, Director of Chemistry Group. So they thought of organizing, when ACS approached them, they thought of organizing a half-day event, especially for the benefit of these uh, research scholars or uh, students who are coming, so they need to be educated to how to properly draft the manuscript and as this everybody mentioned, they have a feeling, gut feeling that ACS is very tough to publish and the rejection rate is very high. So I think uh, how to remove that and uh, increase the success rate of submitting to ACS type of quality journals. So I am indeed uh, thankful to the uh, Professor P.D. Nayak and Professor A.K. Tyagi, Director of Chemistry Group, for giving uh, me the guidance and uh, conceptualizing this idea and organizing this event. I am uh, happy that uh, today it has uh, turned out to be really well and really worth uh, spending half a day for this. And I must also compliment uh, Dr. Uh, Ajay and of course Anand and uh, Krishna for uh, kindly sharing their valuable time and agree to come to BRC and interact with our students and share their knowledge. And of course, they have also agreed to do clarify many things and support us in future as well. Uh, for whatever queries they have and enhance the quality of their manuscript to be make it acceptable to the ACS journals and further strengthen our interaction by way of other activities or connecting with the editorial team or the editors of the various journals. Thank you very much and I appreciate very much your high quality uh, communication, what you did with our colleagues for enhancing their uh, career. Uh, in future and we look forward to have you here in uh, often in future as well thank you very much and yes uh, big uh, hands of upload for uh, all of you for your wonderful uh, presentation and presence and of course uh, i would like to uh, compliment hbni team especially various deans of various uh, disciplines like uh, uh, professor udupa from physical sciences then uh, Professor Gandhi from Chemical Science, then Professor Hema, and of course, their other colleagues, coordinators for the JRF team, Dr. Tapas Das, Vinita, Kuber, Bainsa, and they all helped us a lot in communicating with the students, the uh, newcomers, for uh, 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 for nominating them to participate in this event. I am pretty sure that all these students will benefit immensely with this. And thank you very much for that. And of course, the uh, teams at uh, HBNI, Mr. Anurag and his colleague uh, and others, uh, Dr. An uh, Mr. Adas Dureja, and they all for giving their technical support in uh, broadcasting this uh, event to all other constituent institutes of HBNI, as well as in YouTube. And for all of you, I would like to uh, bring to the notice that this program will be available permanently, maybe in YouTube. So anybody can anytime go and watch again and again. And uh, while writing your manuscript, probably you can get uh, effective tips uh, regarding this. Uh, of course, uh, again, uh, other uh, members from the TSH administration, for making the logistic support, administrative officer and other uh, canteen services and many others, catering services. So they all helped us in shaping this uh, event in a successful manner. 
and again i am very much thankful to all the audience especially the youngsters who have generously came uh, by stopping their experiments in the laboratory today morning and spending some time with us here i am sure uh, then dr patra is there head analytical chemistry thank you for joining uh, us and uh, all other faculty members for their very uh, right uh, questions and their insightful uh, doubts with respect to publication in acs journals uh, and your uh, clarification thank you very much and uh, i'm pretty sure our uh, faculty members will be again in touch with you for any of their queries and look forward to your fruitful interaction in future thank you and with this uh, we will close this session uh, thank you bye